<laughs> okay. All right, internet. Put your thinking caps on. So, this is the third week. Uh, and I've done two tutorials so far. But this one is going to kind of relate to the first one. In the first tutorial, I kind of focused on giving you guys ideas on how you can use movement to create opportunities for damage in this game or Tekken 7, any Tekken, they all work this way. And some of the examples I gave you were to do something like, let's say, a low poke and then backdash. And when that backdash creates a whiff, whiff punish it with like a hop kick or whatever, right? So you can clearly see that what I did there is I linked this down four, this low kick, into a hop kick with a backdash. That's the, that's the, tool that is connecting these two moves together, making them both useful. On their own, perhaps this low doesn't seem very useful, right? It seems like a generic low. And the hop kick itself, though it is useful, as a whiff punish, you're kind of pinpointing with accuracy its use in this case. You're creating a very specific use for it, right? So this is a good way to use, this is a good way to kind of analyze your own move list and create strategies with your character's move list. Now, the thing that I wanted to talk about today, it kind of relates to this concept, and it also relates to a very, very common question and a common problem that people have about frame data. So it's really common for people to say stuff like, Eris, how important is frame data? Or do I need frame data to win? Do I need frame data to get good? etc etc first of all when you ask that question what it really means is you haven't reached the point where you understand what frame data is because if you understand what frame data is you wouldn't ask that question it's obviously extremely valuable and ignoring it is clearly a mistake I mean there is like no way to argue that if you ignore frame data there is no question about it it's a mistake and if you ask that question of whether or not it's valuable, it just means you haven't reached that level of like comprehension of the game to understand its value. But without going into detail on how it works, because I've done other tutorials in the past, you could search my YouTube channel for a frame data tutorial, and it kind of like grazes over the concept. I'm not going to explain how it works. If you don't know how frame data works, you look that up somewhere else. The basic function of it is the game runs at 60 frames per second, much like any other uh, fighting game. And what frame data does is it kind of breaks that 60 frames per second into like a quantifiable method of producing results that are the same every time. So as a competitor, when you get put into a situation and you push a button, you need, you need to be sure that when my finger pushes this button, this character is going to do this move and it's going to take this long to reach there and when it's blocked it's going to create this exact situation I mean it's like a recipe for uh, some kind of delicious dish but if you put the ingredients together in this exact formula this dish will taste delicious every time however if you don't use the exact same formula the final product will vary so you don't want the final product to vary, obviously, because you are competing and you want the final product to be solid. So to support the solidity of that final product, you use frame data. The frame data is like it, it quantifies every decision, right? So that's what frame data is, right? All that aside, let's assume that you've gotten to the point where you understand it at least. I'm going to explain to you how you can use it and the fun way to use it because to me as a player there are two ways to use frame data both of them are extremely important the first way and the more boring way to use frame data is to use it as a tool to understand how to punish things that shit is boring it's extremely important so important but it's super boring let me explain Let's say you're a king player and your buddy, whoever his name is, James, your buddy James is a Lars player. And you need to understand how to kick your friend's ass every time. I mean, it's like you have a grudge, right? The frame data will really help you 
when your buddy James does something like a lightning screw or a forward back 2-1 or a forward 2-4 or any kind of move that's unsafe, the frame data will help you so much because it'll teach you exactly how you can milk every little drop of milk out of <laughs> your, your opponent's character. I mean, if he does something unsafe, the frame data will help you punish it to its fullest punishable potential, right? If you're using the frame data in this way, your success ratio will go up so much because, I mean, you're really playing the game mathematically. Players like MYK, players like uh, probably anyone out there who's very mathematical, like, you know, even uh, Mr. Naps, uh, you know, speed kicks, anyone who's very scientific about the game, they are going to use this aspect of the frame data to solidify their decision making. So that shit's super boring. And I don't blame you for not liking it. Even I myself, when I'm like, like back in Tekken 6, my most hated training um, like thing that I used to do when I used to train was to go into practice mode, to go into the record function and keep re-recording characters' moves, and this didn't even exist in Tekken 6 because they didn't have a record function, but other games, like even Mortal Kombat or uh, uh, In Just Ass, the most annoying and boring way to train is to record your opponent doing something and then practice punishing it over and over again. That's real boring, but it's very, very important. The thing that I think, the part of frame data that I think can be very, very fun and the part that I think new players should focus on is using frame data to create situations and also using frame data to recognize situations. So in the first tutorial, I talked, as I mentioned, about creating situations with movement. In the second tutorial, I talked about how important these situations are to recognize. Now, to recognize these situations you can use frame data and I'll give you a couple examples so I as a king player I'm trying to decide how I'm gonna create office offense I'm trying to decide how I'm going to decide what moves I like what moves are valuable right so you can use frame data to make these decisions and that can be extremely fun in the game of Tekken so let's say for example you pick something like the, the throw giant swing. This throw, if you're looking at a piece of paper that has frame data on it, King's frame data, you would see that this throw is 10 frames to impact. Now, when you look at the concept of 10 frames to impact, you think to yourself, wow, that seems pretty fast, especially if you look at it in relation to every other speed of every other move in the game. You would notice that, wow, Giant Swing is as fast as the fastest move that every character in the game has, right? Which is a jab. Most of the time, unless there's an exception like Flash or something, jab is the fastest tool. It's 10 frames. So once you realize, oh, wow, this is a really fast throw, right? When you realize that, if I could just do it, when you realize that, you'll think to yourself, okay, this must be a value. Now, how can I take frame data and apply with frame data this throw? to other situations where I could just keep pummeling them with this concept, this throw. Well, let's look at the rest of the move list, right? Hmm, what are some go good tools that perhaps give you plus frames? Then you start looking at the frame data and you realize, oh, maybe capital punishment, this move gives you plus one or two, right? Perhaps I can apply a giant swing after my opponent has blocked a capital punishment, right? So. This is like a train of thought that's going through your head. Like, okay, capital punishment. This is plus on block. And if they block it, a giant swing could be a solid follow-up. Then you start exploring the concept of capital punishment. All right, my goal is to get the opponent to block capital punishment. So if they block capital punishment, I can then apply a giant swing. Then you start looking at the properties of capital punishment. What does capital punishment do? Well, first of all, you can clearly see that it travels across the room. Okay, this is one way I can use it. From across the room, I'll just do a capital punishment and hopefully it will uh, you know, get blocked and I will do a giant swing on block. Next property, oh, it jumps. Maybe I could use capital punishment to jump over a situation where I can cr close space and get them to block it and do a giant swing. Then you start to think, okay, well that's on block. 
What about perhaps on hit? So then you look at the properties of giant swing on hit and you realize, holy mackerel, sorry, not giant swing, capital punishment. You realize, holy mackerel, this knocks down. Then you start thinking, oh, wait a minute, let me explore this move further. If it knocks down, can I get anything for free? Oh, I can get something for free. It looks like I can combo. Then you hit the internet. And when you hit the internet, you find out what the best combos you can do off of capital punishment on hit are. Oh, looky look what we have here. I just did a fucking full combo. Well, well, well. So now we have this move, capital punishment. On hit, you get a full combo. On block, you're at plus, and you can apply a giant swing. Then you realize, when I do the blocked capital punishment into a giant swing, he was able to get out of it by blank. How did he get out of it? He got out of it by ducking. Okay, well, if he got out of it by ducking, boom, I have an answer to that. If he ducks, I do a hop kick. Next time, he got out of it by sidestepping right. Okay, next time he does the sidestep right, instead of doing a hop kick or a giant swing, I will do my homing move, right? So you just created a, a very three-dimensional strategy here. This is like you are... Uh, you're basically creating a situation with frame data. Now, all you did was use frame data. You were attracted by this move. You were attracted to it in the first place just because it's plus on block. The concept of it being plus on block when you looked at the frame data is what attracted you to this move. Now, since you were just initially attracted to the move, now you've explored the move and you understand that there are so many different ways to use just this one concept, this one move. And there are so many moves like this that this is the fun way to use frame data in Tekken. Now, this is the creative aspect of it, right? Like, I'm a king player. I'm creating right now, right? Okay, so let's say we use another move. Let's say we use this chest move. This move is exceptionally good at the wall because it's mid and it gives you a lot of plus frames on hit and it gives you good plus frames on block as well. So in this scenario, just like the capital punishment, you were attracted to the move because of the concept of it being plus frames on block. When you realize, oh, this moves plus frames on block, this must be valuable because if it hits, I get damage. That's my reward. If it's blocked, I get plus frames. What can I use these plus frames for? That is really the key in being creative with your offense, with your character. Using frame data can be extremely valuable for the creativity process because the game has so many different moves in it and there are so many different things that you can do. It's like, uh, it can be daunting. It can be like, oh, what do I even do? So this is a way for you to focus on good moves. What, are the, what makes this move good? Another example of using frame data to pick a move is, for example, look at the frame data and see what moves are safe. If you look at the frame data and see, oh, this move is safe, like, for example, forward four for king, this is a safe move. And it's a homing move. You're like, wow, okay, these are properties to a move that make it solid. It's a homing move, it's safe, let's explore it further. Okay, on block, we understand that it's safe, but what happens on hit? Oh, it knocks down, it wall splats. Oh, what happens if it wall splats? I do this combo. You're creating this. These thoughts are starting with one concept that the move is safe. The move is safe. That's it. And the concept branches into all these ideas and ways to move, use this move. So you can understand now that when you say, oh man, frame data, you know, I don't really, I'm intimidated by it. I'm bored by it. It's boring. I don't want to do it. It's mathematically just it's this concept I don't like, right? You don't have to look at it like math class. You can look at it more like, I'm looking at this, like imagine in an RPG, right? You look at all your different weapons that you've picked up in the last, you know, two or three hours you've been playing. You look at the weapons. When you look at the weapons, you look at the stats of the weapon. And you see, oh, this weapon has magic damage. So I won't be able to really use it against this magician because he has high magic defense. But I'll be able to use it against this warrior who has low magic defense. It's the same thing. You're analyzing your move list as though it's a list of the weapons you've picked up. And now you're deciding how you're going to use these weapons. And I'll give you an excellent example. So King has a move, full crouch down forward two. 
this move is super fucking good, right? But if this move is, let's say, a value of 7 or 8, right? If this move is a value of 7 or 8, depending on the character you're fighting against, its value will vary. So, if I'm fighting against a Lars player, this move will be a lot less valuable than if I'm fighting against a Wang player. The reason for that is Lars has a 14 frame launcher that he can punish this move with. So when you look at King's move list and you look at this move and you realize, wow, this move is minus 14. That tells you so much information about the move. Just by looking at this move is minus 14, it tells you that I can abuse the shit out of this against Wang because Wang doesn't have a 14 frame punisher. It's like you're creating these scenarios in your mind and you don't even have to have the console turned on. You know, it's like a piece of paper. It's like statistics. You're reading statistics and you're applying strategy with the knowledge gained from the frame data. You can't use this move as liberally, as freely against an opponent that has a minus 14 punisher, right? So I myself as king, I'm using this move strategically against specific enemies right specific opponents this is like really where the offense of this game really comes from you understand the concepts that you that are at your disposal that's really the point of frame data the point of frame data is to give you clarity I mean think about it if you're playing that same RPG that I was talking about of course you can use the magic weapon against the mage and of course, if you get good enough, you'll be able to kill the mage with the magic weapon. Sure, but does that mean you did it in the most efficient way? Maybe you'll win an entire tournament against a sea of Lars players and you abuse this move over and over and those idiots didn't punish it. Or maybe you'll reach fucking Bukaki rank online and you'll be unstoppable online by abusing this move and Lars players never punished it. That doesn't mean you're good. That just means your opponents are either unable to punish it because they suck or the latency of the internet connection is preventing them from punishing it. Either way, you're whack and you didn't really win shit. It doesn't really mean anything. It's meaningless because when it comes down to someone who understands the concept of frame data, you will be crushed. If I'm the Lars player and I understand that that move is minus 14, and if you get you let me if you allow me to block that move i'm gonna fuck you up and you don't understand that it's over it's over before it ever started right so those people out there who ask well eris how important is frame data i mean the thing is frame data is like it's everything it's like saying how important is it to understand how this works I mean, it's like you're playing it, but to understand how it works, the stats in Dark Souls, the stats in Dark Souls, you need to understand that vigor equals health. You need to understand that whatever, endurance equals stamina, so that when you level up your character, you apply points in these fields and then gain the, the rewards of applying the points into those fields. These are like really structured concepts that a, a, appear in many different games. That's how you apply these uh the rules of the game mathematically so you never have to falter you never have to worry about it Th this is really like it's very basic but at the same time it's very complex and that is really the struggle the major major struggle in tekken is that the basics of the game are very complex and that's really why most simpleton quite simpletons as uh whoever it was said the other day that's why most quite simpletons don't are, are not attracted to this game by nature it has to be tekken has to be kind of introduced to someone because at first glance it really seems like a lot more work than what it's worth it's like okay this is a 3d game and it's like what's the point of learning all this shit it's really like kind of hard to justify but if it's introduced to you in a way that's inviting and the rewards are introduced to you in a way that are like incrementally rewarding so you don't feel like I'm looking forward to winning a tournament 
You're never going to do it. You're never going to win a tournament if that's your goal. Your goal should be minor baby steps. Like something as simple as what I mentioned. Discovering on your own just by looking and understanding the frame data, just by considering it, discovering on your own that capital punishment to giant swing is a good idea, right? Once you discover that, you'll be hooked. You'll be hooked on Tekken because that's what hooked me on Tekken. And let's face it, when it comes to things like doing the homework, learning the plus and minus frames for every character, the way people like MYK and Jimmy J. Tran, the way the real scientists of Tekken have done it, when it comes to that, I fucking hate that. It's boring. It's boring. It's no fun, right? If I wanted to do homework, I would go take some classes and get a degree, right? It's really not uh, fun. Am I right? But you can make it into fun if you take it in a more learning, creativity, exploration way as opposed to, oh, you block that and you have to punish it every time. People in the chat room will watch you play. Let's say you're a streamer, right? People in the chat room will watch you play and they'll say, you didn't punish that. That's minus 12. You didn't punish that. That's minus 12. You, what are you doing? You're still not punishing that. Don't worry about those people. Fuck those people. Because those people are just trying to get you to stop playing Tekken. Don't worry about that. What you should worry about is just understanding what frame data is for. Reading it. Look at it. See what it is. Because for all you nerds out there who play all those RPGs or World of Warcraft or any fucking RPG where you pick up armor and there are stats. Anything. You all decide, okay, well, this is cool. What does this mean? This means magic damage. What does this mean? This means poison damage. You learn all those things, right? Well, this is really how you learn the poison and magic damage and the, the poise and the staggering and the armor attributes of this game. It's really how it works. It quantifies your decisions and it allows you to see clearly what you can do, what your options are, you know? Another concept that's really, really uh, important that I think you guys should consider when you're looking at frame data is frame data allows you to make good or bad decisions. And that's really, really important. I mentioned earlier that you cannot abuse a move like this, full crouch down forward two against Lars, because he's gonna launch punish you. So the value of the move is slightly lower against Lars because he has a 14 frame punisher. So you have to consider that value, right? Risk versus reward. So the abusability of this move goes down because your opponent can punish it, right? Well, there are different aspects to the match that can create variables as well. For example, at the very beginning of a match, when we both have full life bars, a move like a hop kick is gold. It's gold because it's mid, it jumps over lows, it has all these great, fantastic attributes. It, it yields you a large amount of damage for a small amount of risk. And the on block, it's only minus 13. So a lot of characters will not be able to punish you very hard. Someone like, let's say, Lars, all he would be able to do is a forward 2-4, which is, it is a lot of damage, but if you weigh it next to the reward of a hop kick on hit, it's a pretty good uh, risk reward. Like if you were in the casino, you would take that gamble, right? You would take that gamble if it's a good read. However, however, if your life bar is almost depleted and you're nearly dead, this is a very important concept in Tekken, in any fighting game, but I'm talking about Tekken. So if your life bar is nearly depleted and you're almost dead, the value of a hop kick has gone way down to nothing. I mean, you have to literally be sure it's going to hit or else when it gets blocked, you will die. So this has now gone from, yeah, let me just try a couple of hop kicks at the beginning of the round to see if I could get some damage. It's gone from that mindset to if I do this hop kick and I'm wrong, it's over. This round is gone and I will never have the opportunity to play this specific round again. So that tells me that frame data can tell you whether or not you should literally make a decision or not. If frame data can dictate whether or not you should make a decision at this clutch crucial moment, then frame data is extremely important. It's the most important, right? I mean, it's only a matter of reaching the point where you understand it enough to be creative with it. 
once you understand it enough to be creative with it, you will eventually reach the point where you realize, you come to the realization that this isn't just about creativity. This is about me fucking winning. Last time I was Lars, I blocked this and all I did was forward 2-4. And half the time, forward 2-4 whiffed because of the range on block, right? You're thinking to yourself, fuck that. I'm going to use the frame data and I'm going to figure out exactly how I as Lars can punish this move to its fullest potential so that next time when this guy starts abusing it in the clutch in that very moment where the round it's all about this moment he does it you punish it and you won the round it's all a matter of research it's all a matter of application of frame data this is the type of thing that will come naturally it will come naturally. If you're in the chat room right now asking, is it important? It just means you're not there yet. Keep playing and eventually you naturally will realize this is important, obviously. It's obvious, that's my point. It's obvious, but it's not needless to say that it's obvious. In this case, you have to kind of eventually come to that realization that frame data is crucial. It's crucial. Even if you can win without it online, even if you become a Gambu or a Zombu or a, any kind of other kind of weird fucking ranks there are in this game that I don't give a shit about. If you become any of those without frame data, it doesn't mean frame data is not important. It's extremely, extremely important. Um, now, keep in mind, I will answer any kinds of questions for approximately a few minutes after this. But the one thing that I wanted to emphasize, because this is super common, is frame data is really important. But if you don't see the importance in it naturally yet, it just means you haven't played enough yet. You haven't put yourself into enough situations where you lost and you could have won yet. If you put yourself into situations where you block this move and you fuck up and you lose, if you do that enough, you'll stop enjoying the feeling of losing especially when you should have won right the more you play the more times you'll be put into this situation and the more times you're put into this situation the natural drive to win and succeed that humans have that natural drive will push you towards frame data because it's the answer it's the answer you know and if you don't get that push then you're going to be one of those motherfuckers that never gets better, ever. Because you don't have that drive to win. You only have the drive to have fun. You only have the drive to exist among a group of people, a, a community. If you are that person, whatever. You just want to be there. You just like Tekken and you're not really... That's cool, whatever. You like, you know, storylines. You like fucking cost, costumes. You like all kinds of things about Tekken. That's fine. But that's, you're not who I'm talking to. I'm talking to people who really are trying to improve and really are trying to get better. Competitors. Really, the key word here is competitors. You don't like to lose. You like to win. And when you win, you want to examine the win and reproduce it next time. And then reproduce it ten times. And then you want to reproduce it when all the lights are shining and when there's a bunch of people fucking poke chops yelling in your ear. That's what you want you want to be able to reproduce these results the win reproduce the w you know that's what frame data is all about it helps you reproduce the w uh anyway hopefully uh that was you know it was it was kind of something that can help you understand the value of frame data that's really what i wanted to do here today uh explain the value of frame data not how to use it per se not uh you know how to read it or any of that shit just to kind of emphasize why it's valuable in a game like this or any fighting game it's so important in any fighting game it's almost like understanding how the game works you read the manual since the beginning of video games they include an instruction book you know or they sell you a 20 dollars player's guide those things exist because the player the user wants to understand how the product works frame data is like the player's guide it's like the you know i said it a million times i just hope you guys get what I'm explaining here because if you ask how important is frame data it's like the dumbest shit <laughs> it's like how important is the recipe can't I just take all these ingredients and fucking mash them together put them in the oven and I'll get a pizza 
No, man. You got to fucking make the dough. You got to flatten the dough. You got to put the sauce. You got to put the cheese. You got to do it for the right amount of time. You got to put it in the oven this many degrees. You got to preheat the oven. You don't just fucking put everything into an oven and it magically comes out as a pizza. No, it's a formula. It's a method. Frame data is like the method, you know? You got to understand the method. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed. I'll put it on YouTube. I'll take this opportunity to answer some questions. If anyone's interested in asking questions relating to this topic or Tekken or any kind of quick concepts you'd like to ask about, I'll cover them. The good thing about these questions uh, and answers section of these tutorials for me is it gives me an idea of directions to head in in the future. So I think it's really, really uh, important to at least convey some of your problems or uh, hangups or hiccups that potentially you are having. So uh, as I quench my thirst, I'll keep an eye out in the chat.